subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. We know that plenty of extinction events have occurred in the Earth's past. Of these, five have been major extinction events, the last of which was of course the one that killed the dinosaurs and that happened about 65 million years ago. It was the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event and we're also currently in an ongoing Holocene extinction event that has been triggered by human activity. Extinction events reshape the entire biological history of Earth. We are familiar with a lot of extinction events through history, but turns out there was one that we had missed. Scientists have now discovered that there was a previously unknown extinction event about 19 million years ago in the Earth's oceans. This event flattened shark populations across the globe and sharks have still not recovered today from it and shark numbers continue to drop even now. In this video, let's discuss the findings from this research, how they were made and what they mean for sharks today. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Sharks are some of the most resilient animals on earth. They've been around actually for over 400 million years and they have survived at least four major extinction events. Even today, there are many extinct species or ones that are still alive that have been alive for tens of millions of years. But something fishy happened 19 million years ago. For the first time, scientists have identified an extinction event which wiped out over 90% of all sharks across the oceans across the world. And yet, it escaped detection in the fossil record so far. We're just starting to learn about it. Let's first try and place this event in the Earth's biological and geological history. The extinction event occurred in the waters during the Miocene Epoch, which dates from about 23 million years ago to about 5 million years ago. So over 40 million years after the dinosaurs died out. At the time, the Indian plate had already collided with the Eurasian plate and Himalayas had begun building. This had begun 50 million years ago. In fact, the only prominent thing that was different in terms of major geological features was that the land bridge between North and South Americas was absent back then. But the climate was changing. The earth was becoming dry and arid and cooler and was heading into a series of glaciation events or what we commonly tend to refer to as ice ages. But the Miocene itself was relatively warm. From about 21 million years ago to about 14 million years ago, after which temperatures started to drop drastically and suddenly in pulses. But 19 million years ago something happened and, spoiler alert, we don't know what. All we know is that 90% of sharks disappeared in the pelagic ocean. This is the open ocean, the water column that is far away from coastlines and shallow waters. The pelagic ocean is the largest ecosystem on earth. At the time, 19 million years ago, in the oceans, the mammals were still small. Whales were not gigantic as they are today, but fish and sharks were huge. Megalodons existed back then. The research was performed by two scientists. To make the discovery, the duo relied on something called dermal denticles, which are scales that cover the bodies of sharks. Scales cover every inch of a shark's body, including even the eyes and eyeballs. These scales are protective in nature and they act like a body armor. But they are microscopic in size and sharks shed them like crazy. Sharks shed these denticles a lot, so they're actually very common in the fossil record. Because they're so common, they're used as references when studying fossils and also to compare conditions on Earth at varying points in time. They can also provide information about shark population themselves. For every tooth that a shark loses, it sheds about 100 denticles. These hard bits of skin or teeth that sharks and fish shed are called ichthyolites and they're found in the fossil record. 
So in 2015, Dr. Elizabeth Seibert, who's an oceanographer and a paleontologist at Yale and the lead author of this paper, received two samples of clay which spanned about 40 million years of history of sediment cores from the Pacific Ocean floor. She was working on tracking global changes in patterns in ocean ecosystems over long periods of time in Earth's history and she is a pioneer in using the method of studying the ratio of ichthyolites in the fossil record. The samples actually came from certain parts of the Pacific Ocean floor in the ocean's subtropical gyres, which are fast and large spinning water currents. These currents at these gyres have remained stable for millions and millions of years and they actually bring in water from very large distances. So they also bring in animal bones and teeth from really far away. So overall sediment cores that are collected from these areas are very good for tracking fossils. So Dr. Seibert sat about picking apart the sample layer by layer and documenting fossils that were found when midway through the process she realized that there was a sudden change. 19 million years ago or so, the ratio of shark denticles to fish teeth found in the samples changed. So she had noticed that from 85 million years ago up until the dinosaur extinction about 65 million years ago, the ratio was one denticle per fish tooth. So for every fish tooth that was discovered, there was one denticle that was discovered in the core sample. Then this ratio started to fall and about 56 million years ago, the number had stabilized to one denticle for every five fish teeth. This ratio remained steady for about 40 million years until 19 million years ago. Suddenly, she could only find one denticle for every 100 fish teeth and this was across samples. So Dr. Seibert enlisted the help of Leah Rubin who helped study modern day sharks and then classify the denticles depending on which part of the shark's body it came from and which kind of shark it came from. The team realized that the types of tentacles had also fallen in variety to less than one third of what previous sediments had contained. So it was clear that not only had the sharks fallen in number, but they had also fallen in diversity. Seibert and Rubin narrowed down the window of this extinction event to about 100,000 years, which is actually very, very rapid in geological timescales. One of the mysteries with this finding is that it was hiding in plain sight. How did scientists not notice this huge extinction event that occurred in the pelagic ocean which we have been studying for so long? The reason mainly is that our understanding of what oceans were like through history depends on the rock record where the history is recorded and these rocks unfortunately are found more in shallow waters which do not give us really that much of an understanding of the pelagic ocean. The other mystery is what could have caused this extinction event? We don't know. The early Miocene is not very special and does not stand out when it comes to change in climate. So the authors think that a climate or environmental factor was likely not the driver of this extinction event. But more investigation is needed to know what was. And yet again, the findings go on to show that the more we learn about our biological histories, the more mysteries we uncover in Earth's evolutionary past. However, the findings also raise concern. Today, sharks are disappearing at a very drastic rate, in fact, at a pace that is much, much faster than any recorded pace in history. In just 50 years, the diversity of sharks has dropped by more than 70% due to both overfishing as well as the warming of Earth's oceans. Because sharks have been around for hundreds of millions of years, their presence is crucial for the stability of marine ecosystems. Sharks never recovered from their extinction event, and if they continue to die out, there will be unknown but surely devastating and cascading consequences that will be felt across ecosystems around the world.